Welcome, class, to our presentation. We did the biomechanics of a vertical jump. I'm Joe Michek. Brooke Hubbs. I'm Ben So like Joe said, we did the biomechanics of a vertical jump, and we first looked to break the vertical jump down into some critical features. And when doing this, we looked at a bunch of different studies by different authors and looked at the critical features that they defined in a vertical jump. And we took all of their ideas and um, picked out four important critical features that we thought make up the vertical jump. And as you can see, these first two movements define the counter movement, and that is from the standing position, standing position down to where the center of gravity is the lowest in the person. And our second phase is the push-off phase, and that is when the person begins to accelerate to when their toe leaves the ground. The flight phase is right when the toe leaves the ground, all the way down <clears throat> until the toe reaches the ground again. And the landing phase is from the second the toe hits the ground, all the way back up into the standing position. So Joe is going to play a video in front of the camera of the jump that we analyzed. He's looking good. So that was just one of our trials. We did that uh, 10 times, had Joe jump, and we broke it, it down into the timing aspects of um, each of our four counter phases, and we were able to determine the average amount of time spent in each phase um, during Joe's vertical jump. And as you can see, it was spent uh, 23% in the landing, er, okay, I'll start from the beginning. 30% in the counter movement phase, so that was actually the longest phase, followed by only 15% in the push off phase, and then um, split up pretty evenly between the flight and landing, 27% in flight, and 23% in the landing phase. So we're going to break down the critical features into a little bit more depth right now, and we're going to start with the counter movement. And on average, during Joe's jumps, um, he spent about 0.67 seconds in the counter movement phase, which, like we said earlier, was about 30% of the entire movement. <clears throat> and during the counter movement, the jumping muscles contract eccentrically, and due to the stretch recoil properties of the muscles in the human body, this loads up elastic energy um, in the muscles and allows the individual to propel themselves upward. It, so like I said, the counter movement goes from the standing position all the way down until, the cent until when the center of gravity of the person reaches the very lowest point. So we broke down um, the jumping joint angles and movements that happens at each of those angles. So in, during the common movement, the ankle is dorsiflexed, the hip and knees are flexed, and the shoulders are hyperextended back. So like we just talked about, there's dorsiflexion here at the ankle. We have Flexion at the knee, flexion at the hip, and hyperextension here of the arms. So our, our second phase is the push-off phase. In this phase, uh, we are preparing for takeoff, preparing to leave the ground. Um, and this, we are, uh, the, the push-off phase starts as soon as the counter movement, as soon as we are excelling upwards, so that is when, when the push-off phase starts. And it ends as soon as the toes leave the ground. So in uh, this push-off phase, we see that the knees and the trunk are vertically extended upwards very rapidly, followed by the arms reaching up. And then in our joint angles here, we have the ankle um, in plantar flexion, again, uh, push, uh, preparing for push-off. And then our knees and our hips are both extended, and our shoulders are flexed. And here's just a picture here, uh, a little blurry, we can really get a very clear picture. Um, again, foot angles, we are plantar flexed. And our knees and hips are being extended, and they are pretty, they're close to being out full extended here in the push off phase. Next is our flight phase, and this begins as soon as we leave the ground, and it ends as soon as we land back on the ground. And um, in this, our body uh, center of mass is accelerating upwards until it reaches its maximal point, and then it's coming back down. Um, our jumping joints continue to extend to a most extreme angles, so our arms are like reaching as high as they can, and the knees and the hips are all both extended. Um, and again, like I said, it concludes with the toes touch back on the ground. Our ankles are still plantar flexed because we just took off the ground. Our knees and our hips are still extended, and our shoulders are hyperextended, reaching up in the air. 
Yeah, here's some pictures. So again, our feet, uh, we have plantar flexion there, and then knee and hip, they are both flexed, but they are close to um, 180 degrees because you're in the air. Okay. Our final um, critical feature was the landing phase, and during this phase, the muscles absorb um, the impact through eccentric contractions. Um, you can see that we spent, on average, um, about 0.51 seconds in this phase, which is about 23% of the time. Um, the ankle was dorsiflexed, the knee and hip were both flexed, and then the shoulders were hyperextended. Um, you'll also see that there are more extreme angles during this phase um, than simply during the counter movement phase, and then there's a lower center of mass then at, at takeoff. Um, so you can see here that we have the um, ankle dorsiflexion and then the knee and hip flexion. Um, and then the shoulders are um, starting to be hyperextended. Uh, so in conclusion, we had these four critical features of counter movement, push off, flight, and landing phase. Um, the counter movement was the eccentric contraction of the jumping muscles. The push off was the rapid extension of um, the jumping joints and the uh, shoulder flexion of the arm swing. The flight uh, was when the muscles were relaxed and all of the joint angles um, elongated. And then the landing was the eccentric contractions to absorb the impact. Um, and these critical features are important for these vertical jumps because um, they can be applied to a sport aspect as well. Um, like, for example, basketball doing a um, jump ball. Um, if you do these four critical features right, you'll be able to jump higher and get the jump ball. Um, and then again, these are our four critical features, just um, comparing one to the other. And then our references. Are there any questions?